Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Andrea and this is Beyond the Pink Door. So today I am making the Billy sweater dress for myself and I'm going to do a sew along because it has been requested. I'm making the normal sleeved version today and I plan to make a sweatshirt with the balloon sleeve so that'll be another sew along. So I'm wearing my Nina Lee London Southbank sweater dress today, which I really, really like, and it's quite similar to the Billy. I've made two sweater dresses for Keris from the Billy, and I've made one for my niece, and now I'm dying to make one for myself. So I'm making, I'm going to actually put in the pockets in this today, because I really, really like the way the pockets are done, and I think it'll be an interesting sew along. So, I'm making it from this lovely French terry from my shop, nice and colourful. So in the process of deciding what size to make myself, I read a few reviews, looked through the hashtag on Instagram, and I've come to the conclusion that it works out quite big. So when I look at my body measurements, I measure up to more or less a size 4. And I quite like the finished measurements that it says, for the size 4, but I have a feeling it's just going to be too big. So what I did was I took out my Southbank sweater dress pattern and I laid it up against the billy and it's actually quite similar to a size 3. So for the Southbank sweater I made a size 10 at the body, at the bust, and I graded out to a 12 on the hips. And the pattern piece seems to be quite similar to the size 3 billy. So I've cut out a straight size 3 in the billy. I've only made two adjustments to the pattern for my height and one is I have folded up an inch at the waist shortening seam and I've turned up an inch and a half on the hem. So I also shortened it like that for Keris and she's a little bit taller than me and the length of it is really nice. I don't want it terribly long and that seems to work out like the South Bank size for me as well. So I've just been working on a stitch for sewing it up. So you will notice I have a different sewing machine here today. I have my old faff out today because my Husqvarna, my normal sewing machine, has gone to be repaired. I think the timing has gone on it. So I'm back to my faff. And you know, I'm really happy. I really like this sewing machine. So it's a mechanical sewing machine. There's nothing computerized about it at all. So I've been playing around with a zigzag. So what I've done is I've tested out a few zigzags and I've come up with this is what I'm going to go with. So when I stretch it, none of the stitches break. So I'm really happy. So I've played around with a little bit of length and a bit of width because normally on my normal sewing machine, I go with a length of three and a zigzag of one and a half. So I go with double the length per the width. But I don't have that option on this, it's just twisting dials and looking at numbers. So I'm quite happy with that. When I do the stretch test, it doesn't break. So I'm going to unpin my front section and my pockets because the pockets are the first thing we're going to do. So these are our two pocket pieces for our billy. So lovely big pockets teardrop shapes and this is the one with the little cut out at the side we need to start with. And here's our front section with our shape here to put our hand into for our pockets. And what we do is we pin these right sides together we're going to sew along here and our seam allowance for the billy is 1.5 centimetres or 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to pin these in position and sew.
So now you can see that I have sewn just around the curve and I've stretched it and I'm happy none of those stitches are going to break. And what I'm going to do now is turn the pocket bag over. So this is the front, this is the pocket, and I'm going to understitch. So I'm going to sew just on top of where you can feel the other fabric underneath here. And that will just keep the pocket from staying, from popping out and curling out. It's just over the edge and it'll just keep the pocket bag inside the pocket and it'll give a much nicer finish on the outside. So this is how your pocket bag looks now. So it's just attached around the curve and this part is free and this little part is free. So if you put your pocket flat and curl up the front Get your other pocket and you have some notches to match up around and then pin it all around the edge. making sure that it's all flat. And now we're going to sew from the top around just to there with the same zigzag again. So here we are with our pocket bag, just to show you what it looks like on the back. So I've just overlocked around the edges and you've got this little piece here free of the pocket. We're going to pin all those layers together here. And it's the same here at the top. So pop them in there. And there's our pocket bag. Now it's probably quite difficult to see because it's so patterned, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sew on top here just to hold those layers together and at the top part here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew our front to our back at the shoulders. So if we grab our back piece and just pin them in place and using five eighths of an inch we're going to sew our shoulder seams and then I'll 
overlock them. So if my shoulder seam's done, and what I like to do now at this stage is just do the neckband because the front and back are quite light, there's no sleeves to be faffing around, there's nothing else to do, so I'd rather just do my neckband now. So here's my neckband, and I'm just putting the two short edges together, and again, five eighths of an inch. I find this sewing machine much faster than my other one. <laughs> so I'm going to iron that flat now and then I'm going to iron the whole neckband in half. So here's our neckband ironed in half. So we have the centre back seam. I'm going to put a pin in that just to make a mark on it. And then I'm folding the neckband in half and I'm finding the centre front of it. Now I've done the same on the neck of the front and back. I've brought the two shoulder seams together and I've just put a pin here at the centre front and at the centre back. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop the neckband in and I'm going to match up the centre back and the centre front neckband and front and back pieces. So when you do that, this is what you'll end up with. So your neckband is smaller than your neck, so I generally stretch it out and pop a pin in here at the shoulder and then put some extra pins around I've also ironed my shoulder seams towards the back. I did that when I was ironing the neck bend in half. Now I'm going to take the arm off. I'm going to start in the centre back. So here's the centre back. And you'll notice that I'm sewing from the back rather than sewing on the neck bend and I find that better to be able to ease the fabric in and I don't end up with any little puckers 
in the front or back. And just take your time slow, slowly sewing around. Too much there, so That's it, no puckers. That's good, I'm going to iron that nice and flat. So here's the neck band done. I've just overlocked the raw edge there. And what you could do is, where the seam is here, you could zigzag over it flat, like you did with the pockets, or you could twin needle it I think I'm probably going to cover stitch it, um, not yet because I don't have the right colour in the cover stitch, so I can do that again another time. So the next part to do now are the sleeves. So I've unpinned my sleeve pattern and you'll see up here at the top you have your centre. You'll have two notches here and the two notches show the back of the sleeve. And then you've got one notch over here, so that's the front. Here we are with the body laid out. This is the front, this is the back, I know that from the neck. I have my sleeve here. I know that this is the centre notch for the shoulder. And I know this is the front part of the sleeve because I've one notch, so I'm just going to pin it under the arm and pin it in place all along. So I like to pin from the underarm up to the shoulder. Now obviously I'm going to do that for the other sleeve and then I'm going to sew from the underarm across and to the other side. So here we are, I have ironed my sleeve seam, I've ironed it into the sleeve. 
I always iron as I go because I always find that I get a nicer finish to what I'm sewing. So generally when I decide to go sewing, I switch on the kettle, the sewing machine and the iron. <laughs> so here's the front with the pocket and here's the back piece. And if we've done everything correctly, once we match up our underarm seam, everything should fall into place along here and we'll end up with the, slip, the seams being the same length. And what you'll notice on mine is that there's not a lot of space between the pocket and the hem and that's simply because I've shortened it. So if you haven't shortened it, it's going to be another inch and a half longer. So I'm going to pin along my side seam through all my layers here. So you can see here where I stitched on top to hold everything together. This is our pocket opening piece. And then the same here along the sleeve. And then we are going to sew all along that seam with our 5 eighths of an inch again. So I'm starting here at my cuff for the back stitch. Arm, I'm going to give an extra back stitch here because if any stitch is going to break, it's going to break there. And I'm going to do the same here where the pocket are. So, where I can feel the opening here of the pocket, I'm going to stitch over and back there. Same here, I'm going to climb up here again onto more layers for the pocket. So I'm going to give an extra few back stitches there. So here, so here we are. I've just popped it on and I have to say I'm really pleased with the size. The shoulders feel really nice up here and this is how it looks. So I'm really happy that I lifted up the waist, waist area just that inch or else my pockets would have actually been really really low. So I feel now when I put my, my hands into my pockets my tips, the tips of my fingers just tip the bottom of the pocket, so it's just perfect. The size around the hip is actually really nice. I really like that. And what I'm going to do now while I have it on is I'm actually going to sew with the cuffs so that I can just make some adjustments for the length of the sleeve because the sleeve is just perfect now without a cuff. So I'm going to sew the cuffs up and then just hold them up to get an idea of what length I want to trim off the sleeve. So I have my cuffs here. And I'm going to sew them narrow sides together. And then I'll have a look at them on my cuff. Now I've sewn my cuffs together and if you're like me making this with a directional print I always make sure that I have the direction correct when it's folded out like this. So I'm just going to put the cuff on and just put it where I would like the cuff to be. So I just want it there to my wrist. 
And I think if I take about an inch off the length of the sleeve, taking into consideration the seam allowances, I think it'll be just right. I'm feeling a little bit of discomfort around the neck and Keris has actually said this as well. So it's falling towards the back and then slightly choking here at the front. But the shoulder seams are right across my shoulders there. So I think this just needs to be cut maybe a little bit lower. Yeah, that's funny. Keris has said exactly the same thing to me about it. So yeah, that's it. So I'm going to trim off an inch off each of my sleeves and get on with adding my cuffs. But yeah, really pretty. Goes nicely with the wall. <laughs> so I'm back in my south bank. Um, it was actually quite hard to get it over my head. <laughs> so I'll definitely make an adjustment to the neckline. Now this fabric is stretchy, but not like super stretchy. So maybe that makes a difference. But I feel very comfortable in this neck on the south bank. So yeah. I've trimmed off the inch and I've backstitched on the side seam again and I have my cuff here and I have it folded right side out so that the pattern is going in the right direction and I'm going to pop the cuff into the end of the sleeve and I'm going to match up my seams and then I'm going to pin around and stitch around and then overlock. And then that's all we have to do is put the end band and we're finished. So it's been a really enjoyable make. Uh, it's a nice fit so far, so all is good. Now this time I'm going to sew from the cuff side just because I can't pop this through my free arm. And I'm going to just stretch as I sew just to ease the two in together. I'm just going to have a look on the turn of the right side out and just make sure that my cuff pattern is going in the right direction. It should, but I always feel I might be wrong. Yes. There we go. Perfect. So then I'm going to get on with the next one. So we're onto the bottom bands. I've made my bottom bands just a little bit wider. So I've added on an inch here to the width and that's just because I don't want the bottom bands to be as cocoony on it. I don't like when I'm kind of caught walking. So again, making sure that the two pieces are the same direction up, right sides together. And we're going to sew the two short ends together. And then I'm going to iron those seams flat and iron it in half like I did with the neck band. And here's my bottom band. So I've turned it to the right side out so that the flowers are going in the correct direction. And this is a combination of the neck band and the cuff to sew on. So I have my two side seams here and here and I've marked a, I've just popped a pin there into the centre of the front and back and I've done the same on the sweater. I've just popped in a pin there. So I'm going to put my band inside the dress 
just like I did with the cuffs. And I'm going to match up, oh it goes bright and dark there, sorry. I'm going to match up my side seams and then match my pins up together. And I'm going to sew all the layers together. So I'm going to, like that, I'm going to stretch out that extra ease. If you are using the pattern without that alteration that I did, then you're going to have a little bit more ease to um, fit in, of course. And we're done! Sleeves are perfect, just that inch made all the difference, and I think it just goes in enough. There's a little gathering between the sweater and the band on the bottom, so I think it's just enough for me. Lots of stretch room, and the length is just lovely as well. So, really pleased with that. Yeah, gorgeous. So I'm back with an edit. <laughs> this is about two weeks later. I wore the billy, found it so uncomfortable around the neckband that I just had to take it off. And I actually really, really liked the fabric. So I came straight up to my sewing room, unpicked the neckband, cut another neckband two inches longer, believe it or not, and sewed it on. And I've actually cover stitched around the neckline because I really like that finish. I think when you cover stitch or top stitch, twin needle, zigzag, it just sits so much nicer and it looks so professional. So it's far more comfortable. It is still sticking out the back, but I've done another little edit as well. So I made Keras this sweatshirt and I cut the neck opening higher at the back. I'll insert a picture. I took a photograph of where I cut it and I made the neckband two inches longer as well. And yeah, I think we're, we're almost there. She found this far more comfortable. So it didn't stick out at the back. It sat higher and yeah, much, much happier. So it's quite, I feel it's quite normal at the back, whereas I did find, after making the south bank, I did think that when I was cutting out the necklines, especially at the back, it dipped down so far, and I thought, oh, I'm not actually quite sure if that's going to work. And I probably should have gone with my instinct and just cut it that little bit higher, but I thought, no, we'll go with the pattern. So, yeah, that's my little edit. So, I hope you enjoyed watching that. I certainly enjoyed making it and any questions just ask in the comments. So I have made a size 3 just as a sum up. My measurements are 36, 31, 39 at the moment and it just fits really nicely. I shortened up the waist by an inch just by folding at the shortening lines and I took an inch and a half off the bottom. During making it I took an inch off the length of the sleeve and my bands on the bottom are an inch wider than the pattern. So all of that information will be in the description box below as well but if there's anything that I didn't describe well just pop it into the comments and I'll answer you there. So thank you so much if you've watched it this far and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.